Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to create complex steampunk gears in Corel Draw. Now I'm using Corel Draw X8, but this should work in any modern version of Corel Draw like X6 or X7. If you're using an older version like X4 or X5, it may work, but I haven't tried it in those versions. So if it does work, please leave a comment below and let everyone know. Okay, let's jump right in and start our first complex gear. I'm going to start with the ellipse tool. We'll hold shift, draw a circle. We'll just do it five inches by five inches. Now let's give that a color, take off the stroke. And now what we're gonna do is grab our rectangle tool and we're gonna draw a rectangle here. And let's make it 0.75 by 0.5. And we'll give that a color, take off the stroke. Oh, one thing I forgot, let's click on this, hit P to center that on the page. Then we'll grab this, bring it down. Now let's bring it down just a little bit to where it's inside that circle a little bit. I'm gonna scale this up just a little bit where we can see it. Now what I'm gonna do is click this a second time to bring up these rotate icons. These little double headed arrows will let you skew the object left to right. These let you skew up and down. So we're gonna click this one in the middle and we're gonna skew that about to there. Then I'm gonna click this again to bring up the little squares. And I wanna make this a little smaller, maybe 0.4 inches tall. And since we made that a little smaller, let's arrow that down just a little bit where it's inside the circle. Now we wanna click on this, click on it again to bring up the rotate. I'm gonna grab that, put it right there in the center now we're going to bring up our transform panel and we're going to click here in the rotate box 360 degrees slash to divide by 12 hit return and then I'll add another copy here and we just want to apply that all the way around now I want to make the center part here so I'm going to click this circle press ctrl D to make a copy and we're going to change the color on that to something else and I'm going to hold shift click and scale this down about there then I'm gonna do control D again to make another copy change the color again and you'll notice when I press control D the second time and made this copy that it scaled it down automatically well the reason it did that was because since we didn't click off of this one after we scaled it down when I hit control D again it made the next copy and scaled it down the same amount. So if I hit Control D again without deselecting this, you'll see it'll make another copy and scale that one down the same amount as well. But I don't need that copy right now, so we'll just Control Z to undo that. So what I want to do with this circle selected is I want to scale that down some more. So I'm going to hold Shift, scale that down to about there. Now I'm going to get my rectangle tool again. And I'm going to draw a rectangle here. I'm going to press P to center that on the page. Give it a color. Get rid of the stroke. Now with this still selected, I want to make a copy and rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm going to come over to transform, top 90 degrees, and apply. And the first thing I want to do is grab these two rectangles. I'm going to weld those together. Now I'm going to grab this green. I'm going to select the blue and the green. And I'm going to do back minus front here back minus front. Now I'm going to leave the green selected and I'm going to add the purple one to it. Again I'm going to do back minus front, knock those out. Then these I'm going to go over here to my fillet and scallop tool and I'm going to round these corners off a little bit maybe like a 0.08 maybe a little more maybe 0.12 that'll work. So I'll round those corners off. Now I'm going to get my ellipse tool again, draw a circle I think I'll do a one and a half inch circle. Hit P to center that. We'll change the color, take out the stroke. Now what I want to do is select all these middle pieces, the green, the pink, and the yellow, the light yellow. And I'm going to do back minus front to knock all those out. Now I'm going to grab the whole thing, all the little teeth and the inside of the gear, and I'm going to weld all that together. And there we have our first gear. So I'm going to move that over here off the page. So I'm going to go and open my Symbols Manager. 
And if you'll remember in the last few videos, we started saving a list of our symbols here in this document. So we've got all these symbols from the previous videos. So instead of having to draw the circle out again, I'm just going to bring it over, drop it in, press P to center, right click, revert to object. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a triangle. So I'm going to grab this polygon tool and I'm going to change this to three. I'm going to draw a triangle. About like that. Give that a fill. Take off the stroke. Let's change that to a different color. More like that maybe. And I think I'm going to do this about 0.75 inches wide by 1 inch tall. Uh, let's just do 0.5 wide. That's better. Now we'll grab this and we'll center it up here on top of our circle. Arrow it down a couple of spaces. Again, just so it's just inside that circle. Now what I want to do is click on this twice. And again, we're going to take this little center double arrow on the top. And we're going to skew that this way. You can skew it the other way if you want, but I'm going to skew mine to the right. About to there. Then we're going to take this center point, put it in the center of our circle. Now we're going to go back to our transform docker. And we'll come up here and we'll type in 360 degrees divided by, let's say, 24 teeth and that gives us 15 degrees, so we'll hit apply. We'll just apply those all the way around. Now what we'll do is we'll come back to our symbols manager. We'll drag out another circle, right click, revert to object, change the color, P to center, hold shift, scale this down, Maybe about right there. Now we want to get rid of the fill, so we'll left click on this little X to take off the fill. We want to give it a stroke, so we'll click on the color for the stroke. Come over here and give it maybe, let's see, 10 point stroke. Yeah, that'll work. Now with that stroke still selected, we want to come up here to object, come down to convert outline to object. That way it creates a filled object instead of a stroked object. Now I want to grab this little center knockout, drag that over, right click, revert to object. Actually I want to make a copy of this first, so I'm going to grab it, bring it up here. While I'm still holding the left mouse button, I'm going to right click, and that'll make a copy. And you can do that anytime you need to make a copy, just click on it, move it, right click, then let go and it'll make a copy. So with this one selected, I'm just going to change that to 0.5 inches, 0.5 by 0.5. And I'm going to bring that over, center that here. I'm going to click on this one, hit P to center that. And I want to kind of center this between the line and that dot. So maybe right around in there. Click it again, move the rotation point to the center. We'll go back to our transform tool. We'll do 360 degrees divided by let's say seven hit apply apply those around now what we'll do is select all these objects in the middle the purple the red line and then these red dots we'll select all those and we'll do back minus front knock all those out now we'll grab all this come up and hit weld weld all those together and there we have our second complex gear and we'll click and drag that over here to the side for now okay the next one we're going to make we're going to use a piece that we created before we're going to go back to our symbols manager and we're going to grab this gear three drag that out p to center i'm going to blow that up just a little bit i'm going to right click on this revert to object now before when we worked on this, we made this rounded here, but we left these squared off. So I'm going to go and round these off. So I'm going to do fillet scallop again. So we click on this, we'll change the color so we can see it a little better. And in the fillet docker, we're just going to do maybe 0.04, hit apply, and just round those edges off a little bit so they kind of match this and that. All right, so I'm going to go back to my symbols manager. I'm going to grab a five inch circle. P to center, right click to revert to object. Then I'm gonna grab one of my center knockouts, right click, revert to object, P 
to center. Now what I want to do with this circle is right click, convert to curve, and then you'll see we have these little nodes here on all four corners. What I want to do is grab that node, I want to bring it over here to the center, and I want to line that up with the center. Now I want to get rid of this fill, so I'm going to left click to get rid of the fill. And I'm just going to right click on this black to give it a stroke, and we'll do maybe a eight point stroke maybe. All right, we'll just do a five point stroke. Now what I want to do is get my shape tool, and I'm going to click here on this point, and I'm going to break that apart. Then I'm going to click here on this one, and I'm going to break that apart. Then I'm going to get my pick tool, right click, break curve apart. I'm going to grab this piece, and I just want to delete that outer piece. I just want to be left with this. And you can see it's all the way to the center, all the way out to there. Now what I want to do is I want to leave this selected, and I want to come to my transform tool, and I just want to rotate this. One copy of that, it's maybe 20 degrees, and apply. Nope, I forgot to set my rotation point to in the middle, so we click twice move that rotation point to the center. Now I want to rotate this. Let's try 20 degrees. Apply. And that's good. I'm going to click this and I'm going to make a copy of that right quick. So now with both of these lines selected, I'm going to come over to Object, Convert Outline to Object. After I do that, I'm going to weld those together to make those into one object. And now what I want to do is click here. I want to scale this down to about there. So after we scale this down, so now I want to rotate this around two more times. So I'm going to click twice on this, move my rotation point to the center. And I'm going to do 360 divided by 3. Hit apply and apply. Now I'm going to grab the center, press Control D to make a copy. We'll change the color. I want to do 0.5 by 0.5. Now I'm going to grab these center pieces and this circle, and I'm going to weld those together. Now I'm going to grab the gear, weld that together. Now I'm going to get the center dot, press P to center, grab the gear, do back minus front, knock that out. And then I want to round off these corners inside here. So I'm going to go back to my fillet. And I'm going to change my radius to, let's see, maybe, there we go, 0.07. That way it'll round it here, around it everywhere else. So we'll click apply, and it'll round off those corners inside there to give it a little more dynamic look. So then we'll scale that back out. And that's our third gear. And I'm going to do another one similar to this using these same objects. P to center. We'll bring this back over. We'll grab that node. We'll center that. There again. Let's make this a little bigger. Now with my pick tool selected, I'm going to scale this down some. Just click, scale that down to about there. Now I want to get my shape tool. And I want to click these and I want to make this a little more rounded. More like that. Then I'm going to click here, get my rotation point. Make sure that's centered. Then I'm going to rotate these around and we'll go back to our transform tool and let's try, let's just do 20 degrees of rotation. Let's apply that all the way around. Now what we'll do is select all of this, and then we'll unselect the gear part, so just the inner lines are selected. We want to go to Object and Convert Outline to Object. Then we can weld all those together. Now it's just all one piece. And what we can do is we can come over to our Symbols Manager, and we can save that. We'll just call that a spotter. because it looks kind of like a spider. <laughs> now what we want to do is grab a center knockout, right click, revert to object, press P to center that, and I think that's pretty good right there. 
So we'll select the center dot, hold shift, and select these squiggly lines, and we'll weld those together. I forgot to right click and revert to object on that after we saved it to the symbols over here. Now I can click on that and click the center. We can weld those together. Then I want to grab another center piece, right click, revert to object, P to center, change the color, and I'll scale that down to 0.5 by 0.5. And I'll just take those, the blue piece and the red piece, back minus front, knock that hole out. Then I'll take that and I'll take the gear and I'll weld those together. And then we have our fourth gear. Let's move that one over here. Those are the little bit easier ones of the complex gears. So I guess that's about it for now. This video ran kind of long, so I broke it up into two videos. So be sure to watch the second part of complex steampunk gears in Corel Draw. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video and would like to see more, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to be notified of new video releases. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Snapchat at RhinoXNation. If you would like to join our Facebook group to ask questions or download files from our videos, please click the link in the description below to join. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you later.